So in today's Creative Confidence Catch-Up, today I'm going to be sh- uh, talking with uh, Susanna. So Susanna, would you like to tell us a bit about yourself? Hi, Amy. Um, yeah, I'm I'm a writer, a speaker, and I've actually got, um, I've, I've been speaking at Women's Summits, and mm-hmm. I've actually got a few books now that um, I'm a collaborator in this book over my shoulder, which ah. was actually a a number one international bestseller wow and i've got another collaboration book that comes out at the end of this month and i'm looking to launch my first my first fantasy book uh, next month and the manuscript for that is actually what that blue ribbon is for so i submitted to to an international book contest but it actually um as a manuscript it was one of the last seven standing before one of the others was the overall award winner. So, so it's like, and it was the first book I'd ever submitted. So I'm like, okay, I like this. <laughs> so, like having heard about this, so would you say then, like, this is something like as we t- turn towards that like, confidence, and this is like going to be the first thing we talk about today. Would you say that is in um, like writing in books and things like that have they been always a thing on your list or is this something that only just kind of you grew to want to do uh, over time did you have the confidence back when you were younger wanted to do that well I've, so I talk about moving beyond boxes a lot mm-hmm. because from an early age it's like I knew who I was yet everybody else was trying to tell me who I was and what I was and what I was supposed to do. And by the time I got out of high school, I really didn't have any confidence. Mm -hmm. And I ended up getting a commission in the US Army through through ROTC uh, and was in the National Guard. So it's like I was working and doing that. The writing, I've always done stories. I've always loved writing. It wasn't really until the mid nineties when I started to write, um, started to actually write stories. It's like, I, I, I read Ender's Game. I had a dream of something that was like Ender's Game and I wrote the dream down. And so that became kind of the very first short story that I wrote. Mm-hmm. I could never get it where I wanted. So I did a few others and actually that last one right there, that was an honorable mention through Writers of the Future for one of those short short stories. Mm-hmm. So I was like, and, and that other the, the other one is is another honorable mention in Writers of the Future for a different story. So the writing began there. And then I love the writing, but it, it's like everything else got in the way until mm-hmm. about 10 years ago when I read something, I, I'd read something in Ephesians. Uh, it was my grandfather's Bible and he'd actually numbered these things. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking at these numbers, these six items, six numbers. And I was like, what's grandpa doing? And over about three weeks, I, I read it once a week. And it took me that long to realize he was numbering the pieces of the armor of God. Well, then my next thought, the next thing that came to my head was, can I make a fantasy story out of this? Mm -hmm. That's that story. So it's the armor of God. It's set in the medieval time. It's a duology. And the second book was actually a finalist in the same, in, in the same contest a couple of years later. So the writing has always been there. And the desire to write gets stronger. I did a reinvention going into last year that began in Christmas of 19. I wrote it, let a friend read what I'd written for like an an 18 month period. She became an acquisition editor and she's like, I want to publish your book. So that actually comes out at the beginning of next year. Wow. And even, I suppose, when other people believe in you, 
um to say yeah this should be turned into a book or like this should happen it's like it does give you that like oh actually if someone else believes in me then yeah I'm gonna do it and it's I suppose it's it starts with like that self-confidence doesn't it to kind of go yeah I can do this but having that other person to say yeah it's nice to know that you're on the right track maybe well and and the self-confidence is it's not always there no no because it's like you you know you want to write and you write the stories and sometimes sometimes the best stories are when you write them for yourself Mm -hmm. because you're not worried about will others read it you're not focused on trying to change it to match whatever the perceived audiences seem to be reading got you and and that's my approach to writing It's, it's like the main character is always I, when I write, the main character is me. It's like I'm writing from that character's viewpoint, whether mm-hmm. it's a first person or third person story. Um, that that series of short stories that, that that other certificate was for, those were all first person. And it was first person, it was military sci-fi, and it actually has led to me creating, starting three different series in the same universe Mm-hmm. And that award there is for this short story at the beginning of the second series. Right. So I was like, they've both gotten something. It's it's interesting as well. So with these books as well, it, have you got like a favorite sort of theme then that runs throughout them, and like a, a, a sort of yeah. So like you're on about the sci-fi. Is that something that you've always been interested in too? I've I've always loved sci-fi fantasy. Mm-hmm. I just I just gobbled them up. I mean, when I think back to the 80s, if I listen to if I listen to Men at Work, if I mm-hmm. hear a Men at Work song, I'm transported right back to the 80s when I was reading the Gore books by John Norman. All the nostalgia. <laughs> Because that's what it was. One of my favorite series is Gordon Dixon's Dorsai series. Mm-hmm. It's like, these are what I grew up with. And and Ray Bradbury, while I didn't really read a lot, I had some books on tape. And the one that struck with me the most was A Sound of Thunder, a time travel story. Mm-hmm. The key to it is what I call, is what he called, he's like the first to coin the phrase the butterfly effect Mm -hmm. and his version of the butterfly effect is to not go back in the past and change anything not even to step on a butterfly Mm -hmm. because the change in the present when you get back to the present will be it, it could be very different and if i change one thing that happened to me from the past no matter how painful the past may have been to change that is to change me. Yes, and when I can exactly. look in the mirror and see that the person looking back, I see the beauty in her. It's like, I'm happy to see her looking at me. Mm-hmm. Why would I want to risk that by thinking life would be better to make a change? Yeah. It's like, no, thanks. No, no. It's like, yeah, every little experience, like if you don't go through something or whatever, it, 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 you, th- you can think can't you like if I didn't go through that or I didn't go through that I wouldn't be who I am and it is exactly it's it's crazy to think isn't it no matter how painful or not and then mm-hmm. when you ask about a theme I realized I realized within the past month because I hadn't put it together I talk I talk about the importance of being our authentic selves and that's when, when I talk about it it's not it's it's that we don't hide who we are mm-hmm. that, because right now so many people they're afraid that somebody will find out they're neurodiverse or LGBT yeah. or they have a non-regional accent. I mean, it, it can go all the way to race, language, everything. And it's always something, it's, it's like you're afraid what would happen, what might happen, what could people do or say if they find out? Yeah. We waste so much energy hiding that we're not engaging. We're not being our authentic selves Mm -hmm. and the light that we're supposed to be. So this is the box that 
this is the box I talk about. Yeah, it makes sense why you're talking about. Yeah, it really makes sense. And, and that box, there's there's fear in it. It holds us back. And, and what I realized is my main, the, the protagonist in the Armor of God series, he's the oldest prince. He's got his, his dad and his two brothers and him are the last, last of a long line of kings that is connected to the Armor of God. And his dad's basically trying to push him to the side because he's not like his dad. He The dad wants son number two. So the story is really the main character, Henry, finding his place and finding his way out of the box to be his authentic self. Yeah, I love it. And through it is also him basically learning understanding philosophizing what the armor of god is mm -hmm. so it's like everybody else is you put the, the prince will put it on and they can and they will defeat anybody that comes before them mm -hmm. and henry's like i'm not so sure that's really i don't think you guys quite have it but i gotta think about this <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's interesting as well like it, when you talk about what it is that you're talking about now it reminds me of like how people have these expectations of how people should be and if people aren't yes. in that box then it's like oh but sometimes it's like embrace it at the end of the day embrace like who people are because if we were into all different then it's going to be a very dull place isn't it <laughs> well and, and that's it it's we're, we're made uniquely we're mm -hmm. given unique attributes and when somebody when somebody places a person in a box for whatever reason, they've also kind of cherry picked somebody from a subset of a subset of however many down. They cherry picked the example to fit the narrative that they want to paint everybody in the box with. And the reality is everybody in that box is as unique and as diverse as the rest of the country. Mm -hmm. So if it's if it's LGBT, well, number one, each letter is different than the other. Mm -hmm. So they're not exactly the same. And then within each category, they're different from each other because mm -hmm. some of them, it's like, yeah, they can be lumped in there because somebody found out this little piece of their life, but that doesn't define who they are. Mm -hmm. Whatever the boxes, you could be neurodiverse, you could be have have a mental health issues depression bipolar have a tattoo that you're afraid people will see yeah. ever and it's like people will take that little piece of information and then decide this is who you are and that's not who you are no you yeah. don't even belong in that group There's so much more yeah yeah um, so like as we go on to the community piece then uh, uh, like as you have been growing up and um who you are now and like has there been anybody who you feel that has been of in influence to you then and um, like somebody who you'd like yeah I, I love their sort of um their values their ethos about who who they are and align with what you're about what, what is not to fit outside the box and they just want me out there if that makes sense well yeah it does and there's when, when it comes to that i don't really look at big names for anything in particular no, no. really the people that have, i've connected with the most um uh, especially on linkedin it's not like they mm -hmm. have they may not have huge followings but they are the people that i just resonate for various reasons yeah i've, I've got a small group I'm, I'm a part of two small groups of like one, there's four of us and another one, there's seven of us. Um, and, and, and the group of seven, it, we got together because we did an, an improv fireside storytelling earlier this year. Wow. And actually I think the video for that is actually on my YouTube channel. It's not to check that out. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was like 50 minutes and and six of us created a story. We had the idea, went in, and it's just like a fireside story. One person starts it, and then the next person picks up, and the next person picks up, Who and you don't that? know. So, where... so you never know what you're going to end up with. 
we That's don't know. So cool. We we had we knew kind of how it had to end because the seventh person, it was all basically finding him, mm-hmm. but the hows and the what we did. It, you talk storytelling too, and and I love storytelling. That's why I love speaking, and I love, I love writing, and I have a series of posts on LinkedIn about a place that I call the Forest of Doonbrook, mm-hmm. with Athena the Owl and the Lady Guardians. And I've actually posted these little stories because it all began almost a year ago. It was a year ago at the end of this month when I was walking on a trail in the in a forest nearby. And this owl came around the corner and just kept gliding towards me, but getting lower and lower mm-hmm. until I crouched. I, I kind of figured she, she just, she's gliding towards me. She sees me. It's like, this idiot will move. I'm not going through branches. <laughs> And from there, I created, I because I crossed paths with her like a half a dozen times over the next 10 to 14 days. Mm-hmm. And one of those times, I actually just stood there. I was six feet away from her. And, and we just stood there. And I started talking with her. And she let me take pictures. I got selfies with her. And it's, it's like it created, she was the first And then I would see a deer and I saw a white egret and a blue heron and and an eagle and some turkey vultures. And and they all became characters within this forest. I love it. It, It's nice how these just like you can just see how these all these different like themes are coming in. But it's quite nice. I I like the idea of nature as well. That's for me is um, quite important when it comes. I'm really inspired by like, yeah, nature, like like you've got here and like trees and leaves and being out there. And yeah, that's that's yeah, I like that. Well, it also allowed me to take another aspect of what I do, which is focused on reinvention. Mm. There's, a, there's a reason why I just say reinvention maven with my name because I've gone through it I understand it and then some of those posts with the forest included talking about reinvention because the forest is always reinventing itself in many yeah. ways especially mm-hmm. especially four times a year it goes through a major reinvention with each season there's changes in the winter time, you can see all over the place because there's no leaves. In the summertime, it's filled with leaves mm-hmm. and on the trees. So you, you can't see far off of the trails. In the springtime, in the fall, it's going through a change to get to those other seasons. So it's always doing reinvention. Yeah. And it's it always people. doing reinvention. Yeah. Yeah, I love, I love that. I love that. So is, are there any, like, um, at this moment in time, then, um, your favorite project, would you say, that you're working on? Or, like, a, a, a piece of your, um, with the books, for example, uh, is there a favorite book that um, stands out to you the most, which, um, obviously, you've written? Well, it's it's going to be when that first, when that first Armor of God book comes out, that's, it's like, that's the one. I've got mm-hmm. somebody's just doing kind of a final edit with it right now. I need to find, I need to get the, the cover design for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the whole goal is to have it done by, by mid to latter part of September, because I'm in, I'm in a summit. Uh, it's called get out of her damn way. Mm-hmm. And I realized as I was talking to my coach, who's also putting the summit on Mm -hmm. that my book just fits everything I talk about. And she's like, great. Then have the book out before the summit and, and use it, use it in how you speak, use it in your training, just make it a part of everything. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. The story is there. And when I look at the other ones that are sitting there ready to go, that is kind of a central theme of everything I've got is moving beyond the box. It's definitely the case with the second series in in that sci-fi three series. Um, and then some of my other ones, it's just finding different ways. I've got a YA 
fantasy that's focused on a girl and she's very much out of the box Mm -hmm. so yeah challenging perceptions and just breaking those boundaries and all that sort yeah I love that so as we come towards the end of uh, this uh, week's episode my uh, last little bit for you today do you have any uh, words of encouragement any words of wisdom advice that you'd give to anybody um, currently watching today well I'll, I'll give you two things one is my motto my motto is I'm not what I used to be yet I am who I've always been Mm. it's like when you know who you are even when everybody else tries to have you go differently you got to be who you are it's who you were created to be but then another one because I talk boxes and I talk about the fear because the fear for so many people that fear holds us back it could be imposter syndrome it can be so many things that and and the fear when we're in that spot and we're stuck Fear is always telling lies, but there's grains of truth in it so that when you look through the cracks of the box, you see the grains of truth. And when you see the grains of truth, it kind of keeps you in the safety of the box. Mm-hmm. Um, and and so one of the things I say to be able to move beyond boxes, when you own your fear, fear no longer owns you. Mm -hmm. and the whole key to that is when you own it you own whatever it was you were afraid others were going to find out about then the power is in your hands you decide who you're going to tell when how what why where you're going to tell them and most importantly if you're going to tell them Mm -hmm. You don't have to, just because you own it doesn't mean you have to tell everybody. Mm. And just because, and when you do own it, if somebody finds out, it's not as big a deal anymore. It's Mm. it's like, why be so worried? They find out, they find out. You own it and you're just being yourself. So so you can engage with people. And if, if you make a slip and something comes out, that's life. You owned it. You're not going to be afraid of it anymore. And you just keep going. Yeah. So, so much better than uh, trying to fake it. And then when like you get revealed, I suppose, then it's like, you oh, can't fake it till you it's, make not, it. it's not good, is it? It's like, it's always better to be yourself. Exactly. I love that. No, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been really, really thank great you. speaking to you. Thank you so much, Amy. No worries.